Hi guys, it is actually a fine Sunday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the drought parched Finger Lakes of New York uh, here on this uh, Sunday, October 11th, 2020. I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles and this is Santo Panza, my little co-pilot, uh, doing what we try to do every day and that's to uh, chronicle the collapse of a planet. So I just think it is your lucky day you actually get two chronicles of the collapse today. I uh, just finished kind of a little roundup of collapse and uh, in this story from uh, Life Science, what is the first species humans drove to extinction, which I covered in the last rant, they linked uh, us over to another story from Live Science from late July uh, that just escaped my attention. And so uh, I'm just going to sit here and read this story that, uh, that I missed a couple of months ago. And I'm going to put the link on here. You can read this yourself. I'm not going to read every word of it. But we're going to dig into the essential question of the 21st century. What could drive humans to extinction? I would say what will drive humans to extinction? We, meaning humans, might play a role in our own extinction, which of course would be we will play the major role in our own extinction. So anyway, uh, let's just dive right in this and figure out what is going to turn this planet into a human extinction zone. The scene opens on a sparse gray landscape, a gnarled tree in the foreground, bits of ash slowly drifting down from the sky. On the horizon, a few huddled figures stumble forward in and into a bleak future. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is a common visual trope in many post-apocalyptic films. Usually, these films tell the story of a catastrophe, a, an asteroid strike perhaps, or a nuclear war that causes humanity's demise and then follows the challenges that the remaining humans face as they try to save their species from extinction. Such films grip the public imagination, but what if human extinction was less a cinematic scenario and instead a looming reality? That might seem like a sensational question, but in fact, dozens of researchers around the world now spend their days grappling with this very possibility and how we might avoid it. Oh yes, their task isn't easy. There are multiple theories around what might ultimately cause human extinction. Everything from alien invasions to catastrophic asteroid strikes. But among those you know, seriously investigating this question, there is a general consensus of people studying the extinction of the human race in, you know, in the 21st century, uh, there is a general consensus that some risks to human life are more plausible than others. In the field, researchers have a name for these. They call them existential risks. What follows here is just a sampling, just a few of the risk that researchers have at the top of their minds. And uh, we're going to give a nod to Book Hermit 
and the number one at the top of the list is nuclear war. Uh, and uh, I, guys, I'm going to put the link on here and you can read because it would it would take a, me a long time to read this whole thing. Uh, so uh, what is going? Uh, I, I, I'm just gonna try to center in on how the risk could actually, what is the risk to driving us extinct? As in the case of all existential risks, there aren't hard estimates available on how much of Earth's population a nuclear firestorm might eliminate, but it is expected that the effects of a large-scale nuclear winter, the period of freezing temperatures and limited food production that would follow a nuclear war, caused by a smoky nuclear haze blocking sunlight from reaching the earth would be profound. Uh, this is one of these uh, researchers, uh, Luke Kemp, uh, who studies existential risk at Cambridge University. Uh, quote, from most of the modeling I've seen, nuclear war would be absolutely horrendous. It could lead to the death of large swaths of humanity, but it seems unlikely that it by itself would lead to our extinction, Kemp said. So let's look at pandemics. Uh, and where, and when we're talking about pandemics, we're talking about a real pandemic here. And what they're uh, what they're looking at, and with these pandemics, uh, is the misuse of biotechnology, whether accidental or on purpose. Uh, how the how the real pandemic is most likely to come about. The misuse of biotechnology is another existential risk that keeps researchers up at night. This is technology that harnesses biology to make new prod make new products. One in particular concerns Cassidy Nelson. Uh, I can't remember what her, uh, I, I'm skipping ahead, can't remember what Cassidy's uh, resume is all about, but you know, one, one of these collapsitologists, one in particular concerns Cassidy Nelson's the abuse of biotechnology to engineer deadly quick-spreading pathogens Quote, I worry about a whole range of different pandemic scenarios, but I do think the ones that could be man-made are possibly the, the greatest threat that we could have from biology this century, uh, she said. She, oh, she is the co-lead of the biosecurity team at the Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford, uh, who she researches biosecurity issues that face humanity, such as new infectious diseases, pandemics, and biological weapons. Uh, she recognizes that a pathogen that has been specifically engineered to be as contagious and deadly as possible could be far more damaging than a natural pathogen, potentially dispatching large swaths 
of Earth's population in a limited time, quote, nature is pretty phenomenal at coming up with pathogens that through, nat through natural selection, it's terrible when it does, uh, but it does not have this kind of direct intent. My concern would be if you had a bad actor who intentionally tried to design a pathogen to have as much negative impact as possible through how contagious it was and how deadly. Yes. Uh, all right, let's move on from that. Uh, obvious climate change and artificial intelligence. Um, despite what Book Hermit says, no tour of threats to human survival can exclude climate change, a phenomenon that is already driving the decline and extinction of multiple species across the planet. Could climate change hurl humanity toward the same fate? Yes. The, the accompaniments to climate change, including food insecurity, water scarcity, and extreme weather events, are set to increasingly threaten human survival at regional scales. Uh, looking to the future, climate change is what Kemp and Sam Mitchell of Collapse Chronicles describes as an, a quote, existential risk multiplier at global scales, meaning that climate change amplifies the other threats to humanity's survival, quoting uh, this existential risk investigator Kemp, quote, it does appear to have all these relationships to both conflict as well as political change, which just make the world a much more dangerous place to be. Imagine food or water scarcity intensifying international tensions and triggering nuclear wars. Uh, this way of thinking uh, <clears throat> about human extinction highlights the interconnectedness of existential risk. As Kemp hinted before, it is unlikely that a single mass extinction event would result from a single calamity like a nuclear war or a pandemic. Rather, history shows us that most civilizational collapses are driven by several interwoven uh, factors. Uh, a catastrophic event might leave, might leave only a few hundred or thousand survivors left on Earth, which would bring humanity's viability as a species into a uh, question. Alternatively, a collapse could wipe out only a segment of humanity, but consequently uh, trigger global insecurity and con and conflict, reduce our resilience to other threats, setting in motion a more gradual decline. Uh, moving along, uh, uh, 
Another angle to this is that an existential risk to humanity does not necessarily have to threaten our very survival in order to be counted. Uh, yes, uh, then we get into, uh, of course, AI. Uh, researchers philosophize that intelligent robots unintentionally unleashed on the world might impose widespread surveillance on humans or outpace us physically and mentally. That would usurp our dominance on the planet and for many could fundamentally alter the idea of what it means to be a human. But of course, the uh, bottom line is, what do you think the number one driver of human extinction is? How about humanity itself? However wide-ranging all of these uh, other existential risks are, they all have one thing in common. Humans, humans play a key role in determining the severity of all these other risks. So what if humans are their own biggest extinction risk. That's a focus of Sabine Roman's research as a research associate at the Center for the Study of Ex Existential Risks. He models societal evolution and collapse looking at past civilizations. Um, it, it's, it's ironic his last name is Roman. As Roman sees it, the majority of existential risks you know, to humanity are, quote, self-created, rooted in societies and the systems they produce. In Roman's view, humanity's attraction to continuous growth leads to exploitation, planetary destruction, and conflict. Ironically, that only increases some of the biggest threats we face today and our vulnerability to them. Quote, a bit too much hinges on perpetual economic growth. If we need to optimize something, that would be good, he said. He likens our civilization to a line of dominoes where the risk itself isn't so much the nudge that starts the cascade, it's vulnerability to that threat. Quote, quoting Roman, the domino line is very vulnerable, vulnerable to any perturbation. If we actually want to change something, there is very little realistic impact we can have on external factors. Yes, do you think so, Dr. Roman? Uh, Kemp agrees with Roman's logic, quote, when people ask me what is the biggest existential risk facing humankind, I tend to strive for a curveball in response. Poor international cooperation. Yes, uh, close quote. Surreal as it may seem, that is why studying humanity's potential demise is a pragmatic pragmatic pursuit. It can illuminate humanity's own role in hastening the threat. Blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, they try to uh, spin the usual hopium lemonade out of this. 
saying, okay, well, it is humans that are the biggest threat to humanity and the planet, so it had better be humans that figure out a way to get us out of this mess, PDQ. We shall see. But I got to wrap up today's second chronicle of the collapse and get out there and start uh, preparing my little camper for uh, my trip south to the Point Lonesome Swamp in Florida, kicking off two weeks for tomorrow trying to get down to the Point Lonesome Swamp and dig in my heels before uh, Civil War martial law and Mad Max begin uh, in about uh, three weeks. My guys. Okay, we are done.